10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Manchester 1, United have zero. reached the promised land. Yes, everybody, how are we all doing? Sam here. I'm live. Bang on time. Well, maybe you might think it's late, but I'd say bang on time. I'm always a couple of minutes late every day. You've got to keep you fashion, keep you waiting, got to be fashionably late. But it's that Friday feeling. It's sunny outside. I think it's sunny anyway. My curtain's closed. But <laughs> how are you all doing? It's going to be a bumper show today. It really is going to be a bumper show. You can see from the title, you can see from the overlay here. It feels like we're, we're transfer, the, the transfers are starting in earnest. I'm going to run through what's happening in the transfer market, not just with Manchester United, but circumstantially, the context of everything that's going on and why Manchester United, that really forces our hand. Things are good to have to start happening fast. We're going to speak about Nordi Mukiele this morning, the RB Leipzig right back, who's out of contract next summer. Now, remember that we've been linked with him before. I've already done a full story on it, run through the latest from there. But there really are so many different talking points. I can't actually run through all of them before we just get started. But how are you all doing? You let me know where you're watching from in the comments. Who we got down? We've got Kieran. We've got King. We've got Takeoff. Bruce. Vicky, I can see you there. Neil. T. Uh, Calvin. Good morning to all of you. Stuart. Fred. And Ricky. Paula. Yes. Good morning, all of you. Um, i tell you what. Manchester United news. All sorts of news today. Seriously. Um, it feels like we're in the eye of the storm. It feels like transfer season is this. It feels like every single transfer window these days outdoes the last one. I don't know if you get the same sense. Just, just in the, not just in the amounts of money that are necessarily being spent, but in, but in how clubs are acting. I've already done my video on this, right? I've already, I've already proven and shown why Eric Ten Hag needs that two hundred million pound plus budget, given what everybody around us are doing given the fact that we're 35 points behind City and 34 behind Liverpool. It's going to be a big summer. And things are really starting to get heated straight away. Got Peter watching from the Netherlands. How you doing? Um, we've got uh, Jack watching from Stockport. How you doing, buddy? Uh, and Jay Sparrow watching from the Philippines. Remember, it's map day today. It's Friday today. It's going to be a good day. I'm going to announce the giveaway of uh, the Eric Ten Hag poster, which is down there. That one, they're going to choose one. I've already chosen it. We've chosen one of you who left a five-star review on the podcast. Uh, what else have we got today? Make sure you join the community down there. Going to be doing the giveaway probably next week. I'm not sure when I'm going to announce it, but I want to say quickly before we do start, right? Anybody who hasn't joined the Telegram community already, I'd seriously encourage you to do so. I've been blown away by how amazing it has been since the start. It's already roughly roughly seven to eight times the size of what the, of what the WhatsApp community was at its peak. Because WhatsApp, WhatsApp had a limit, but there's so many of us now that we outgrew that very, very quickly. So honestly, there's a link in the description, or you can use that QR code there, scan that. I'm going to give 250 quid cash monies away to one member of that community as, a, as my thank you for helping United People's TV get to 250,000 subscribers. So make sure genuinely you join that community. It really is worth it. Like, fantastic conversation, and it really has a community vibe in there as well. Ismail watching from Canada. How are you morning? How are you doing there? How are you morning? I hope you're not morning. How are you doing this morning? Johnny's saying, sure, man, he's already signed for Real. I don't think he's, he's not officially signed from Real yet. But I'll be honest. I'll be honest. It looks like sure, many, we can pretty much rule him out. Sure, many was number one on my list. He really, really was. And I find it a little bit odd what's going on with the lack of rumours really linking us to midfielders but we linked with one today which i will run through but look let's get let's get straight into this show in fact i'm going to answer that question there because that popped up let's have a look do you think we need to act now we're going to miss out on on the good players again dominic i think united's hand is going to be quite forced this summer and let's run through and explain that quickly uh ismail i think you should probably find better ways to sleep in than listening to my dulcet tones honestly you might have not you might not I'll tell you what i had a great dream last night I won the lottery. I won 333 grand in America somewhere with two friends. I think I won a car as well. It's good fun. But then I woke up and I was sad. Anyway, sad. No, I was coming on the stream. I'm, I'm only joking, but no, I did actually win a car and 300. Uh, damn it. It's only a dream. Look, let's, <laughs> it's Friday. I'm probably going to chat some shit this morning. Well, that's what happens. But what I want to quickly explain here is exactly why I feel United are going to have to Go aggressive now and go on the front foot. 
I've said these next four weeks are going to be pretty important, pretty big for Manchester United, right? Because our preseason starts on the 27th. United know they've got to act fast this summer because everything that's going on around us. We already know what Man City have done with Erling Haaland. But it's not just them, right? If we were to take a look at what uh, Aston Villa are doing. Philip Coutinho's done. Bubakar Kamara on a free and Diego Carlos. That's an attacking midfielder, a defensive midfielder and a new centre-back already signed. My, my, my. How I would love that. And then if you look further afield, Leeds. Even Leeds are spending nearly 30 million euros on signing this lad from RB Salzburg. And then we take a look at Borussia Dortmund, right? Obviously, they've got money in from uh, Erling Haaland. That might, you might say, well, Sam, that's why they're spending. But I've always, and I've always stood by the fact that that's, that was always one problem for United, wasn't it? We always seemed to wait for when we had money in before we started signing players. It's not the right way to go about things. But Borussia Dortmund there, Adiemi Schlotterbeck, Ozkan, Nikasula, they've got a few free transfers for Rizzi Romano this morning, saying to look, Jaden Braff, another lad they're going to be nicking from Man City. Is that Man Who's that? Who's that from? Man City? I think he's from Man City. Let's have a look. Uh, what kit is he wearing? Yeah, he's from City. He's called Jaden. They're trying it again. But my word, we've got to, as Nazi says here, we've really got to act fast. Type, type, type your dates in the comments, right? I'll be interested to know. When, when do you think United will make their first signing by? Because I one million a million percent is going to be before the preseason tour starts. If it's not, red flags. When do you think it will happen by? Sandeep, you're joining as a member. Let me. I'm I'm not sure I recognise your name. I might do. Let me know where you're watching from, buddy. Leo, you're saying good morning, Sam. I have a good feeling about our transfers this summer. I hope so, man. I've got a, I've got a good feeling as well. Uh, Klein, right? You go as early as the first of June. The next four days. Jeez. Oh, Al, you're saying Villa's gone mental. Jaden, yeah, Dortmund really are going aggressive. As I said, maybe it makes it easier for the fact that they've got that Haaland money to spend. But Man United should already know the players that we want to be getting rid of. We know full well that Cavani's gone, Pop has gone, Matt has gone, Matic has gone, and Lingard have gone. And, we, and Lee Grant has gone. Jesus, I'll speak about that in a minute. Well, in a few minutes anyway. But then you can add in the likes, the likes of Jones, but... I think I might do a video on it. You could literally get an entire starting eleven out of players that should be leaving Manchester United this season. And you're saying, Sam, I think what we are seeing from other clubs in terms of transfers clearly indicates great forward planning. These transfers have probably been 12 months in the planning. I, yeah, maybe. May, maybe they have been planning, but United have had a long time to plan. We've already, well, we announced, what was it, four or five weeks ago now? We announced the deal for Eric Ten Hag to come in. It's not the end of May yet, and we already have Eric Ten Hag in. If you watch my interview, my interview, no, it's not, it's, it's calm down there. Watch my video I did on Steve McLaren's interview with Josh from the McLaren podcast yesterday. Steve, went, again, went into great detail about how detailed Eric Ten Hag has been. They've had like six, seven days of pure McLaren, Van der Gag, Ten Hag, and Murto heads down, planning. That's what's been going on behind the scenes for the last week. United know. Well, they should know anyway. I'd be surprised if they didn't by now. United absolutely should know who our targets are. And we're going to run into it. We're going to run through the latest news because there is quite a few, quite a lot to talk about. The links are really starting to spread themselves, I suppose, which can frustrate us all because we're like, oh, Jesus Christ, here we go again. Linked to every, pardon me, every single player under the sun. But I'll try and run through them all for you and give you a little, a little bit more clarity on them. Uh, Stephen, good morning to you, my friend. Who else is down here in the comments? Jonathan Story, I can see you there. Ooh, tasty. It's an interesting comment. That's just caught my eye. I don't know why that is. Um, let's have a look. Nancy, what are you saying on Facebook? Uh, you're saying uh, United's not always serious in the transfer market. At the end of the day, they will, they will still continue with the crap players. And the next thing, we'll put a blame on the coach. I'm not, I'm not being as um, pessimistic as that, Nancy. I, I really think that this will be a summer where Manchester United will change. And it's... I don't, if in the grand scheme of things, I think United will get their stuff done this summer. But as I showed there, with everything that City are doing, with uh, Villa and, and, and Leeds and Dortmund and, and clubs all around Europe are doing, they're moving aggressively and very quickly. And that's a case of it changes, it changes United's time frame, if you know what I mean. It forces us to play our hand. We can't just sit there and just keep passing on our passing on our, our, our hands that we don't have. I'm trying to compare it to poker. 
all those free hands where we're not paying, playing blinds. We're waiting to get pocket aces. United have got to go aggressive and go quick. And that's what I'm going to run through here. Simon, so, mean, I did see that. Uh, there was a Man Manchester United's latest financial reports were released yesterday. And I am going to do a video on it at lunchtime today. There's a lot of numbers to get your head around. It's a bit confusing. I want to run through them in detail. So I'm going to save the majority of that for the video that's going to go out this lunchtime. Um, but look, let me quickly dive into it. I say quickly. We've been chatting for 10 minutes already. Damn, that was quick. That was quick. But look, Manchester United, let's run through the latest transfer news here that's coming through. Uh, you got this from Get French Football News yesterday. The Manchester United have made initial contacts for Leipzig's Nordi Mukiele. Now, Mukiele, as you know full well, if you've watched the video on United People's TV, I've covered the full story on it. He is a fullback for, for Leipzig whose contract expires next summer. So this is the only summer where they can sell him for a fee. If they don't, they're going to lose him on a free transfer. He's somebody who plays right wing back, right back, right midfield, and also centre back. He's a player with real versatility. And he's a player who would come with a very relatively cheap price tag. We run through what the actual news here. Lequip report this evening. The Manchester United have made initial contacts over a potential transfer. And as I said, if you look at the valuation there, that is a mad, that's it's an it's an opportunistic signing. That is what. Mukiele would be. Mukiele would not be a, a signing that massively moves the needle, right? He, he would. He would. He would improve the overall squad depth, the, the versatility we've got, the cover we've got. A right back. Hell, he'd probably be a better right back than Wambasaka has been. Let's be completely honest. I'm not being brutal on him, but I think Wambasaka should be shipped off to Crystal Palace, ideally on loan. But Mukiele, it's not the first time that this name's popped up, and it won't be the last time. And as I said, if you want to find out a bit more information about Mukiele. Head over to Type Mukiele in United People's TV. There's a full story I've done on him. In fact, let me try and do that for you now. Quickly whilst I'm live. Don't say I don't treat you well. Uh, Mukiele. Da -da 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 -da. Have a look. Let me get the link for that. There you go. I've, I covered this two weeks ago, actually. Uh, so if you watch that video there, I've, I've dropped the link in the description for you. Actually, just as a comment. I run through all of the rumours what he is, his assets, his strengths, where he'd fit in at Manchester United and whether it would be a good or not signing. It strikes me as one of those signings that would probably be a smart signing for United in a summer where maybe our budget's not going to be endless, right? Players like that that can come in for 10 to 15 million, it might be a smart signing. And let me go down here and see, see what you're saying. Malps, you disagree. You say you'd avoid uh, Mukiele. And Tim, you're saying why on loan for wan uh, Simply because nobody is going to pay his wages. Uh, it's going to be a case of if wan does leave, he'll go out on a season. Well, I'm just predicting. It might not happen. But I don't think Crystal Palace will pay what we want wan to be sold for cash-wise. So they'll probably agree to a season-long loan with a deal probably in the region of 20 to 25 million. That's what I imagine they might agree to. But I'm just guessing. wan may end up staying. Uh, extra, you're saying I would rather have Ethan Laird. Ethan Laird really did have a fantastic start to his loan spell last season when he was at Swansea and then the, the the club decided I mean it was on paper it kind of made this, it made sense we moved him from Swansea and we gave him to Scott Parker's Bournemouth and is it Scott Parker I think it's Scott Parker at Bournemouth or is he at Fulham I can't remember anyway Bournemouth and the idea was that then he was going to start and play in a team that was chasing promotion that's ultimately one promotion to the Premier League uh, but he didn't have that much game time by comparison. He sort of like disappeared into the shadows. So that's a real shame about uh, Ethan Laird. But no doubt he's an option to have in preseason. Uh, but and, and I think this is what, what, I've, what I've spoken about previously. Because we've got, we've got so much to do in midfield this summer. We need a new uh, versatile forward and we need a new centre-back. I know that fullbacks are so important for United in this new Eric Ten Hag system. They really are. Fullbacks are so crucial in the modern game. But they're really particularly crucial to a, a, a team like Klopp or, or Guardiola or Ten Hag. The fullbacks are going to be so crucial. So United need to invest in those positions. I just can't see us spending our money there this summer. If we're going to get one, it will be the summer after. That's what I think so. Uh, Manny, you're saying that I think the Nkunku deal will be very complicated. I'll run through the latest on that throughout the stream. Um, somebody down there, uh, somebody was asking about the Telegram community group i can't see it that what's the name of the group uh as i said gary if you look in the links on youtube you're on facebook let me just pop it in the uh, comments for you now one second 
That one there. Right. Anybody who wants to, just follow that link right there. Download Telegram first before you click that link. Telegram takes like two seconds to download from the Apple Store. It's all free. It'll take two seconds. Join the community. Lovely, lovely. Would be lovely to have you on there. Really would. Any news on Malassia? Not at this moment in time. Obviously played pretty, pretty damn well against Roma in the... Uh, is it UA? What's, what's, it, what's it even called? UEFA Conference League? I think that's what it's called. Did they do that so they can call it the UCL? Very cheeky. Very cheeky indeed. But look, there's a, there's a new name. We spoke about this yesterday, right? Chuamene uh, looks like he's going to Real Madrid. Will be top of most of our lists for that sort of player position. But he's not going to come to Man United. Looks like he's going Real Madrid to Liverpool. Second, Bubakar Kamara could have been a name. He'd be like, okay, well, yeah, all right. he's gone to Aston Villa. So it's kind of really not particular. No one's really particularly sure what's going on. And that's where a new name's come up from yesterday. That's Manu Kone, who is he plays for Borussia Mönchengladbach. Again, Lequip yesterday saying that Manchester United are, this is only like keeping an eye on him. And if you take a look at who he is, Kuadio Kone. Valuation just under 15 million plays for Borussia Mönchengladbach, 21-year-old French central midfielder. We take a quick look at where he's positionally played in his career to date. He's a central defensive midfielder and a defensive uh, and a midfielder. Like, that's where he is. He's played in, in the French League. He's played in the Bundesliga. And we take a quick look at his stats. I'll be honest, not particularly mind-blowing stats, but you can see where his natural strengths lie. He's, a, he's obviously an aggressive pressing midfielder, somebody who likes it. I always compare, when I see high interceptions, I always, it might, you probably won't, but I always think of Michael Carrick. Carrick. Michael Carrick was one of those midfielders who was so who had such a high football IQ that he never really needed to tackle somebody. He never really needed to press somebody. He just blocked the passing lane. He'd know exactly where that player is going to pass, and he'd just get in the way of it. Maybe that, maybe that's what um, what what's his name? I can't. Jeez, Kone, I've forgotten his name. I don't know who he is. I'll be completely honest. I'm going to have to do plenty of research into it. But this is another name that we can, I suppose, add to the list. And if you look at the likes of Chuamene, if you look at the likes of Kante previously, of Camavinga, and the talent that this French national team, just the talent coming out of France, is absolutely superb. Really is. So I can't dismiss him. I can't say he's brilliant. But he's another name on our list. And as I said, it, it's, it's, it's been a bit strange, isn't it? How, how, how the, the lack of real links to proper top defensive midfielders this summer. I find it a little bit concerning. I really do. And I'm not sure he's going to come in and massively move the needle. But again, he might well be a brilliant player. Um, Fletcher was like that as well. Yeah, Fletcher, again, high football IQ. I like Fletcher. Fletcher and Park were two of those players inside that Fergie squad. But you can just you rely on them to do a job, man. Rely on them to do a job. Hey, Paula, everybody said Michael Carrick was overrated. That They they, they said that during and after his career. And the same about Paul Scholes as well. Um, da, 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 let's see what else you're saying down there. Likely to be en Enzo Fernandez. We've been linked with him as well. There's a lot of midfielders that we've been tentatively linked with. And this is going to be the latest tentative link i'm not here screaming oh my god there you go we're gonna sign him but the links to this man have come out yesterday from nowhere the links to mukiele are stronger they've been there before but this is the next name on the list and as i said there's a lot of like this this might frustrate you that there are only links here but I, I, as i said this we united's transfer activity is is starting now it feels like we're kicking out of neutral after the eric ten Hag situation we've had uh, announcement was on Monday, right? This is a full week we've had now, and I really do expect aggressive movement from now onwards. Uh, the OGs will remember that. Teribo West. I always signed Teribo West in Pez. I always signed Teribo West. I always signed Oberfami Martins. The OGs of Pez will know that. You always got Oberfami Martins. Always cheap, would always come to your club. If you really had this money to splash, you go for Agiano with his sweet 99 shot power as well. But Teribo West, the old school AC Milan defender. Old school as hell. That's a cool comment. I like that. But look, let's move on. As I said, this we're not just speaking about one player here. We're not just speaking about two players here. Although, Phil, Mukiele for 15 million. Does that sound like a a risk signing to you? Does that sound like a signing which could work out very well for United? And if it doesn't, a signing that we could quite easily shift on a year later without having a huge wage packet that, cru that crucifies the club 
or a huge investment in that player like Maguire that forces us to keep trying with him. I don't know. But again, Mukiele, I'm not just saying that for no, for no reason. He would have been profiled. He would have been tracked. And if he ticks all the boxes in that sense, bring him in 15 million. Absolutely. And Tun, you're talking about getting Kante. Maybe that's why we're looking at players like Kone or Teribo West, depending on him. Who you look, yeah, of course it's cut. And maybe that's why we're looking at players like him, a young 21 year old French midfielder who's bre who's had a breakout season in the Bundesliga. Maybe we're going to be going for someone like him. I think we need someone probably a bit more established than that at the moment. And then someone like him as an understudy, because ideally in a, in a dream world, we'd sign two defensive midfielders. That, that's how little strength and depth we have there. It's still going to be a case of even if we sign a top class defensive midfielder, if he gets injured, we're back to Matomane playing in that role. So it's still going to be a couple of um, it's still going to be a couple of transfer windows before this squad really starts to get built. Um, yeah, there you go, per a perfect example from Lee. Look at Dan James. I don't know for the life of me how he managed that. That's got to be one of the best things we've ever done. Selling Dan James for like 25, 30 million was outrageously good business. Outrageous. Signed for 15 million. It was a talent that we identified. Nah. Remember he remember his start at the club? Burst on three goals in four games, I think he got. Think, oh shit, we've got one here. <laughs> Disputed off face of the earth. But yeah, good example of a signing that didn't work out, but didn't cripple us. And we made a profit when we sold him on. But look, as I said, these links are everywhere at the moment. Laurie Whitwell was talking about Darwin Nunez. Now, Darwin Nunez is a name that this is not the first time we mention it. This won't be the last time we mention him. Lots of links to Manchester United. He was saying that Darwin Nunez is one that Manchester United have been in talks with. Jorge Mendes is involved with him now. So it's an interesting dynamic as he will be working on a deal for Nunez. Now, if we're looking at, um, I suppose, blockbuster signings this summer, then you're looking at probably Nunez or Nkunku as, as the two players, um, probably the two players who really could command that sort of fee that it would be that sort of player, the, the, the 60 to 75 million range. Who would you choose? I think you already let me know in the comments, but I've got to type Nunez or Nkunku because they are different types of players, right? They are different types of players. Uh, and Kunku's probably more of an all-rounded player. In terms of like an elite finisher, you might say that Nunez is a little bit ahead of Nkunku, but Nkunku's got a great return, goals and assists. I mean, there's absolutely no chance, Monza, that they both join. They really won't both join. And I don't know if either of them will join, but I'll tell you what, United really are definitely in for Nunez. That is 100% true at this point. Uh, let's see who you're saying down in the comments. Uh, and lots and lots of you saying and Kunku, who we got down here, one, two, three, uh, four. But at the same time, there are plenty of you. That says, and I, this is something I've said as well quite a few times. Anytime I mention Nunez or anytime I mention Nkunku, I say it's properly, properly split among the fan base. There isn't a clear number one choice. I don't think there's a clear number one choice for who the fans want in as our new forward. I don't think there's a clear number one choice for who fans would prefer to come in as our defensive midfielder. I think we all know who the preferred central midfielder is, and that's Frankie de Jong. I think, I mean, if you look at, even a look at centre-back, I think there's people that would argue between Timber, between Torres. It's not particularly clear, but hopefully United do have that sort of clarity at the club. Helgon, you're saying that Nkunku don't tr trust us to provide Nunes a service. That is definitely what um, Nunes looks like. A man who he will linger. He, he has his zone. He's not going to be someone who's massively involved in, a, in the build-up play. But if you give him the service, he'll just bury goals left, right and centre. But that's exactly the sort of play we've got in Cristiano Ronaldo. And even though he did score 23, 24 goals, he had to do a lot of that on his own. He really did. There, there, there weren't that many goals this season that Ronaldo scored where he was just in the right position at the right time and then scored a nice, simple goal. A lot of Ronaldo's goals that he scored were through his own sheer class, whether it's a towering header, whether it's a free kick, whether it's a shot from 25 yards. Ronaldo had to do a lot. And then whoever comes in has to probably do less because I'm not sure they're going to get the same sort of... They're not as good as Ronaldo, right? Um, I mean, come on. You're getting a straight up... Why, why are people going so bad, like so mad on Rashford? What, what? 
I, I see this. I see this in the comments most days. As I, as I always say, it's why I keep the comments to subscribers only. I I read the comments as I'm talking to you live. It's really it's kind of hard to do both at the same time. And if you chat shit like that, you're just going to distract me, and then the, the conversation of the stream just goes downhill. So don't fucking do it. And if you are doing it, mods, you have permission to ban anybody who's doing it. Don't ruin the community for everybody. Rashford's a disease. Some people chat shit. Some people are absolutely mad. And as I told you this, that as there's a huge set of, uh, there's a huge sense of entitlement among modern football fans. If a player shit, you're a disease. Get out of my club. Fuck off. Sign someone straight away. Bring him in. It's weird. It's really weird how, how vicious, vicious it gets. Back in the day, you just complained. I don't, I don't know why I said like an old bloke there, but it's back in the day, you just complained in a pub, stuck your middle finger up at the TV and it didn't go any further. Maybe that's just the way that social media goes where you just stick your middle finger up at the, at the ground. I've just said, man, it's, it's, it's so unnecessarily toxic. Sanjay, nice to see you there joining as a member. Um, let me know where you're watching from. <laughs> right, let's move on from that. But yeah, people, you don't have to go in so hard on, on that. Seriously, like, you don't have to go so hard on anybody. Ooh. Anyway, got distracted. This is another, mate, this is the, the day of new names, I think we call this stream. Manchester United and Crystal Palace are keeping tabs on da Derby's Malcolm Ebiowi. Ebiowi? Ebiowi. Uh, talented striker born in 2003. We take a quick look at his numbers. I don't know who he, he's a breakthrough player, somebody who's played across all positions. But I'll be honest, if you're the age of 18, you're going to be playing across all three positions. You're not going to have something set in stone. But I tell you what, this strikes me as if we were to go after him and we were to sign him, it would probably be a similar situation to what Man City did with Julian Alvarez and what Liverpool did with Fabio Carvalho. Maybe loan him back out to Fulham, maybe for next season, because of course we know who Fulham's manager is, and that is Wayne Rooney. And you would probably trust him to develop very well under Wayne Rooney. If and Wayne Rooney and Derby are down in League One next season. If United are keeping their eye out on players like Malcolm, it's because we're nodding towards it. It's what we need to do. I, I said this to you before. This summer, it has to be where Manchester United not only go out and snap up excellent talents to improve our squad now, but really start to identify those players who are in the, this. Malcolm's a bit younger, towards the age of 18. But signing those players who, in two years' time, can be those big 50, 60, 70 million players. Players like Christopher and Kunku, who RB Leipzig and Paul Mitchell identified for 13 million they signed him and now he's worth 75 a couple of years later incredible absolutely incredible really but that's what happens when your scouting is really really good um rashford yeah, rashford needs to improve yeah cool rashford needs to improve tons of these players need to improve man this whole squad needs to improve there is not one you can talk about ronaldo cool but there's still stuff that ronaldo can improve the hey you can talk yeah he was great there's still tough to, there is not one player inside this united squad this season that you can hand on heart say they don't need to improve. Everybody needs to improve next season, man. All of them. Jeez. Uh, let's go down here. Da, da, da. No, I won't. Why do people have such a fucking agenda against Rashford? It's weird. Adrian, I've already talked about this. Uh, Brennan Johnson, he's done absolutely class at Forest this year. I think he's named uh, EFL Young Player of the Year. Forest are in the playoff final. A bit like Jed Spence. I need both of those players there. I don't know Rooney's not Fulham manager. Rooney's Derby manager. Jesus, come on, people. You know what I mean. I'm just getting my clubs mixed up. Just getting my clubs mixed up. I'll tell you what, before I do quickly move on, uh, what am I going to do today? I've already announced. I haven't announced the winner of the 10 half posters. I'll do that in a second. But I want to quickly thank Bet Victor for supporting United People's TV. And I want to bring this video up because I think it's an interesting and debatable point, I suppose, that Adam McCola has raised about, about the Premier League Player of the Year awards. And the PFA Player of the Year awards. You let me know what you think. Look, I'm going to look at this from a little bit more of a serious angle. Yeah, I genuinely believe, for the same reason Salah probably didn't get Player of the Year. Um, I think players from the Asian continent and the African continent are sometimes just less regarded in the English media. I know, I know, Hong Min Son is someone that is. You know, everyone tries to force you to like him. Oh, Sonny, this, that, and the other. And that kind of grinds my gears a lot. Yeah, like... What, what's, your, what's your take on that? I, I, I mean, Salah literally won Player of the Year, what was it, a year ago, two years ago? I don't personally think 
that is the case. But you might disagree with that. So the, I'll, I'll let, there's a link in the description to go over to the Bet Victor video. If you can, can you just go over there and leave a comment? Because it will help United People's TV. It will show that the community here is engaging with Bet Victor, who is supporting the channel here. But it's 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 a bit weird. I and mean, look, I did watch some of the overlap with um with Gary Neville. A lot of good points are raised in there. Did you see the bit with Gary Neville uh, where Jamie Carragher pulled up his text that he sent him? I was sending those exact same texts to my mates. I was like, legitimately, I think I tweeted at half time. I was like, how to build a bunker? That's 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 that's, that's what I think. And look, uh, maybe you do. Maybe you do see it if you do have that, that heritage more than I would. And Mark, yes, I did. But I got it wrong. I think I didn't get it wrong. I just said the wrong thing. It's, I always find that incredible on I incredible online. Anybody, if, if you make a if you make a single mistake in anything you do, immediately people will comment, "You're wrong, mate. You're wrong." People <laughs> people love to find mistakes. I'll tell you that, absolutely love to find mistakes. Uh, ah, look, it's Friday, so let's get a couple of fun things done. I'm going to announce the winner now. The second winner after What Hump? Who is What Hump? Did What Hump was Hump What Hump a real person? I'm not really sure. But the winner of the Ten Hag poster is Tim Johnson. So congratulations to you, Tim. Hopefully you're watching here. Um, just if you're on Telegram, drop me a DM on, on Telegram. If you're on Instagram or Twitter, slide into my DMs on there as well. Congratulations to you, Tim, uh, for winning that poster, right? Uh, it's that one, not that one there, but it's one like that. Worth 50 quid. So make sure you buy yourself a nice A2 frame because it's a good one. So congratulations to you, Tim. So make sure you slide into my DMs. Because if you don't, I'm going to have to come back here uh, next week and do the giveaway again for the third time. Uh, dip, dip, dip. There are just lots of you that, I'll be honest, lots and lots of you are still all chatting shit about Rashford in the comments. So I'm not even going to go down to the comments at the moment. I'm just going to carry on talking. Um, man, it's busy. It is busy at this moment in time. Busy, busy, busy. As I said, we can go over here. We can now talk about more. Movements that's happened this time without at United. The representatives of Dean Henderson, Aaron Wambasaka, and Brandon Williams have already sought clarity and are already planning an exit strategy. Now, I personally think all three of them could be leaving. I think Dean Henderson, I don't think there's any chance you keep him happy at the club this season as our number two. I just don't think it's a possibility. Not after he signed that new deal, not after he expected to come in to be our number one this season, it's 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 um it's a shame for him, but he definitely has to leave if he wants to get regular football, and he's got the ambition to do that. Whether we whether we let him go on loan or whether we keep him, I don't know. I don't know. I tell you what, I'm, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna just straight up close the comments after this. I'm not I'm not close the comments. I'm just not gonna look at them for the next five ten minutes. The amount of shit being chatted in the comments here. Come on, people. The community is here to have real conversation. I've spoken about Rashford. I've even done a... <laughs> you can go back and look at the spotlight video I did on Marcus Rashford like 12, 18 months ago, people. I've told you, and you can try your hardest to try and pick holes in me and my agendas. I've got none. I've got one. And no, I said I've got one. What's best for United? Pogba not being at the club is best for United. Rashford finding his form and becoming the, the, that version of himself again is best for United. If it doesn't happen next year, he's going to be shipped off. Martial, I don't think it's best for United that he stays anymore. Tell you what, toodle pips to the comments. I apologise for everyone who's actually leaving decent comments, but it's distracting me too much this morning. So I'm going to just ignore it for the next five, ten minutes. I'm going to run through all the stories because if I, if I don't, I won't be able to speak and run through everything. Your fault. I told you, you didn't listen. Well, some of you didn't listen, unfortunately. It's always bad people who ruin it for everyone else, isn't it? Anyway, Frankie De Jong, I said yesterday, I'm not going to speak about him at all until something big happens. And this is exactly what I want to see happening. These sorts of stories coming out. Manchester United have given Frankie De Jong an ultimatum. The English club have communicated their interest in him and now want to him to define whether or not he wants to leave Barca. It's exactly what United need to do. Slap the offer on the table. Frankie, yes or no, my friend. Tell us now, because we're not sticking about. We're not sticking around. Sticking about, that's not the right thing to say. But it's exactly what United need to do. We can't just be left like, dang, like just chasing Frankie de Jong's tail all summer. 
We have to give them the ultimatum. Now, maybe that might mean that we end up empty handed, that we don't sign Frankie de Jong. But it's better that we do that than waste our time on a player who is not going to come in if he's not going to come in. So I want to see that from our club. That, for me, is a good thing. I'll tell you what else happened yesterday. This man left. Lee Grant. Was he a painter decorator? Was he a canteen assistant? I'm not sure. He was here for four years. He played two games of football. He was brought in as a third choice goalkeeper, I suppose. And he stayed as a third choice goalkeeper. But um, I'm, glad Lee Grant, I'm, I'm glad Lee Grant is gone. Right, I'll head back to the comments here now. Uh, Chris, what are you saying here? Nice to see you joining there, my friend. Darius saying, good man, cracking the whip. Man. Someone's got to crack the whip. Some people love to love, love to chat shit online because you can just get away with it. You can say what you want and do what you want. No, you can't on this channel and you shouldn't be able to online. You have to take responsibilities for saying bullshit stuff. Sorry. Uh, mate, UTFR, you're saying Villa making huge moves. They are. They are. Mate, Lee, <laughs> I remember that. Was that when he was holding the uh, the person who was holding up the subs board? Looked like he was uh, Lee Grant. It's an absolute spitting image of Lee Grant. Uh, dip, dip, dip. Dip, 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 dip. Right, let's go over here and let's read the next story. Ah, well, this is something that a lot of you have been messaging me about. And as I said, I'm going to be doing a video on this this, this afternoon. Uh, the latest financial reports came out yesterday confirming... Well, confirming everything that we knew about the club. Uh, Manchester United's net debt still remains at £495 million, which has gone up compared to last year because the club took out a credit loan agreement to increase our cash funds. Therefore, our debt went up. Uh, the dividend is being paid again this year and also an extra £10 million is getting paid because of, I think it was from last year, there was a £10 million delay in the dividends. The fuckers are just leaping. I'm going to run through this in great detail in a video that's going out at lunchtime. As I said, it's not really the appropriate place to have this conversation in a live stream. There's too many numbers and too many things to explain to be able to do that and interact at the same time. So that's why I'm going to separate them out. Uh, Justin, I appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. I don't like to bring up compliments too much. I'm, I'm trying to remain humble, I suppose. Uh, I just don't think it's good to blow your own trumpet. Um, thoughts on Bubakar Kamara? My thoughts are he's gone to Aston Villa. And we've not come into Manchester United. Um, <laughs> still people. <laughs> Rashford's been off for a long time. What, you mean when he scored 22 goals like two years ago? Yeah, nice one, Kaza. Kaza Soze, maybe you're the enemy from usual suspects. I've got your number. Got your number. I'll tell you what, let's get, look, let's, let's get something a bit lighthearted to improve, the, improve everyone's mood this morning, right? This cracked me up from Reddit this morning. Uh, this is what the person posted. My office wanted us to decorate our desks for the Jubilee I've been putting up photos of the Queen's face swapped with Fergie and no one's noticed yet. And honestly, if you look at it like that, you genuinely cannot tell. But, <laughs> but when you zoom in, <laughs> ah, that's Queen Fergie, Sir Alex Elizabeth. Don't know what you want to call him. Don't know what you call, want to call her, but it absolutely cracked me up and I can't unsee it. So now you have to see it. All right. I'm not going to apologize for that. That's freaking me out. <laughs> Who knew the Fergie and the Queen had so much characteristics that were the exact same? <laughs> uh, it cracked me up, so I have to show it anyway. Um, geez, I'll tell you what, quickly. Uh, as it's Friday, peeps, th you let me know. Uh, His Majesty Fergie, I like that. Um, you let me know where you're watching from. I'll get three names on the fabled map. And for the, for, the, for the next 10, 15 minutes or so, if you want to ask and engage with the channel and you want to actually send in a question, instead of just spout some some spout some shit and expect me to interact with it then i will answer your, your question so three of you let me know where you're watching from but as i said queen elizabeth or queen fergie she's right there he's right there i'm confused now absolutely crap me up seeing that right let me head to the map and see where you're watching from christian cool you're watching from sunsval in sweden you can go on the map sir nice to have you there as a subscriber um let's go down here sunsval I would love to go to uh, Oslo for the, there you go, Sundsvall in Sweden on the map, sir. Congratulations. Let's go down here. Well, I mean, Toby, that has to be the most rhetorical question I've ever seen on the channel. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. Um, there was one from a member up here. What was it? Alan. Oh, I'm not sure I've got you on here, my friend. Let me get you on. Watching from Lim in Cheshire. That's not a Cheshire accent in any way, shape or form. I don't think you're. In, I don't think you live in boots. There you go. Maybe you do live in boots. 
don't think you do. Right, let's go one more. Uh, let's see. Let's have a look. Uh, I'm pretty. I'm not sure I've got North Macedonia on here. Scop is it Skopje? I think it's Skopje. That's kind of that's kind of why I hoped that Manchester United would end up in the the UEFA Conference League because we would have got trips like that. That would have been incredible. Everybody's asking to see Queen Fergie again. Well, there you go. Let's keep Queen Fergie on the screen. Let's keep it regal in the comments as well. Uh, Chris, Sam, hope you've been well. Bit off topic, but United's preseason tour is going to be the first time I've seen them in real life. Can't wait. Well, Chris, make sure you enjoy that, my friend. I would, I would go to Australia, but Jesus Christ, it's so expensive to get there. A lot of geography popping up. Jeez, there's a lot of geography popping up. Um, there's a super chat up here that I missed. Let me bring this one up. Ron, what are you saying? Same way I can't unsee Glazer looking like a John Dory fish. <laughs> Big up to finding Nemo. Um, watching from West Brom. Samra's watching from West Brom. Stririum from India. Anonymous one from Kent. Very anonymous indeed. But look, everybody, as I said, this is going to be a mad summer. This really is. It feels like the eye of the storm. It feels like next week, I would, I would be very surprised if we're not here on this channel after Man United have made some actual official, official bids. Um, you let me know what you think about that in the comments. I personally do. And this one there, you don't seem comfortable hearing Rashford being called out. Why is that? I don't. It's not about Rashford being called out. I've called out Harry Maguire a ton. I've called out Rashford before. I've called out. Pogba, I've called out Marcy, I've called out everybody. But I just don't like it when people take it that's too... I'll be honest, I'm, I'm a bit of a hypocrite because I've done it with Harry Maguire. I've never gone personal, but I've really gone in on Harry Maguire this season. You know, As I said, I think it's because he's, um, he's a captain and I think captains have to be held accountable to a different standard. And I'll tell you what, Queen Fergie agrees with me on that one. Uh, I asked her, but I don't know. I just see people going a little bit too hard on Marcus Rashford and seemingly forgetting how good he has been for the club. And I just, I think, make that judgment after after next season, next season, after this preseason now under a new manager. I don't know. I really, I really, I really think uh, you rag on the commenters, but do the same. I don't do this. I don't do that. Oh my God, why am I going? Why am I fucking explaining myself to some people? Seriously, uh, Vaishnav, you can remember. Let me know where you're watching from, my friend. Gangshi, yeah, man, you are the biggest G on the channel. Thank you very much, as always. Uh, and there's a super chat there from somebody else. There's a couple actually. Let me read all these out. Dara, what you're saying? Petition for Eric Ten Hag out and the Queen in. <sighs> Could you imagine the team talks? I don't know what it would be. As long as Prince Andrew didn't come along, but shouldn't have mentioned that. Uh, Quentin. Uh, what do you think about Gianluca Scamacca? Scamacca obviously is somebody, a Sassuolo striker, really had a cracking season in Serie A, and a lot of people are, are mentioning him and whether or not he'd be a good signing. He's a proper out and out striker, isn't he? He's like six foot seven. He's an absolute, so basically a bouncer instead of a footballer. You never get in past him. But I don't know. I haven't watched enough of Scamacca, but clearly he's somebody that a lot of people, maybe I should do a scouting video on him. Chris, you're saying the only thing I'm worried about is all the rumours that nothing actually happens while all other clubs are making moves. I'm not too worried about that if I'm being utterly honest. I feel like we're in the eye of the storm. I, th I don't know. Call it misplaced optimism if you want. But I think United will, will get it done. This I would think we'll get the business done this summer. I really do. That might be wishful thinking. I might be coming here in, in a couple of months' time and spewing, fuming at the fact that we still haven't got stuff done. But I just feel like we will get things done differently. And as I said, I, I'd be so surprised if we're here next Friday on this stream, on the Friday stream, and, and nothing has really happened. And it's still all hearsay. Because United really are starting to make moves. The Mukiele one is definitely one to keep uh, a lookout for. Fergie Sunny saying, why is Fletcher on the recruitment team? Fletcher was on the recruitment team previously. We don't know whether he's still going to hold that position because Eric Ten Hag's come in and we have no idea what the structure is behind the scenes now. I'd be very surprised if Fletcher's massively involved in it, if I've been completely honest. I think Fletcher's going to be moving, hopefully, into a more... Um, into a more... Um, 
a specific role, if you want to call it that. A specific role. Gungshi there, you're saying I didn't actually read the super chat. I may have read it wrong. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't really have a message. Oh, my word. I did not read that. We're going to do it anyway. 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 There we go. Now that's cheered the chat up. Let's go and ask Queen Fergie what she thinks. She enjoyed it as well. He enjoyed it. I'm not sure. She, he? Oh, God. It's a bit of both. But people, people, man. I don't know what. The comments on here, normally very good. Normally, normally very, very good, man. Um, today, you've caught my eye. You've distracted me. Oh, right, look. Big up to you, Gungshi, for doing that as well, man. I, uh, oh, look. look. Thank you, everybody, man. I, I, this, is, this is why I wanted to do that giveaway um the 250 quid giveaway i'll continue to do giveaways i gave away a ronaldo shirt on the telegram community this week i've got another two ronaldo shirts i'm giving away on the telegram community over the next couple of weeks i've also got a brian robson 91 european cup winner shirt to give away i've got this that i'm now giving away to make sure you're watching tim i tell you what if you're not watching maybe i can never just give this away tim johnson giving it to you my friend <sighs> When's the next kit, re kit reveal? I've no idea when the next kit reveal is, actually, Sigmund. I'll be honest, and I say this to people, I really don't care. I do not give a shit about the kit. I, I, haven't, given a, I haven't given a toss about the kit for a long time. It's just, it, it changes every year. Obviously, you build, you, you build like a visual memory, a memory up. So if you look at a kit, it will take you back to Rooney wearing it. It will take you back to a specific game or a moment. And in that sense, kits do have importance. But I'm never going to be... Um, I'm, I'm I'm never going to be somebody who cares too much about the subtle differences of the collar. I'll like it. I'll be like, yeah, decent. But that's probably as much as I go for. Uh, do you think Ronaldo's salary will justify his role this coming season? I'm, yeah, I think I really, really do, Young. I think that uh, Ronaldo this season... Ronaldo last season was fantastic in his own right. For him to have scored 23, 24 goals in a team that had such little coherence at the age of 37 in the hardest and most intense league in the world was staggering. It really was staggering, as was the fact that he was overlooked for the Player of Season Awards and Saka wasn't. Mm. That was weird. I think Ronaldo next season, under a coach in a proper system, he'll find himself running around a lot less. Next season, sorry, last season, we watched Ronaldo frustrated a lot of the times, didn't we? Dropping into his own half, sometimes being at left back, right back. Um, that won't happen as much next season. Everyone's going to have a defined role and Ronaldo should get more service. Uh, there was a comment there, uh, Danny saying, Sam, do you know when the new fixtures are out? I believe they're out around about the 16th of June, roughly, there or thereabouts. So we'll know before the preseason starts who we're playing on the 6th of August. And I think the season kickstarts on the 6th of August. Um, Dip, dip, dip. Retro all day long. Like you can see it here. I love my retro stuff. Uh, I really, really do. Uh, and it's not just, it's not simply because uh, the Glazers don't get any money. I just think the designs back in the day were sexier. I liked them. I preferred them. I don't know. That's, that's just personal opinion. I think that this, that because I, I don't remember, but I, if I, I might be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure that some kits used to last a couple of seasons. Uh, I'll have a look back in the day, but I'm pretty sure that they just churn them out now by comparison. Uh, Darry saying Ronaldo with City or Liverpool would have scored 40 goals. Yeah, we spoke, we spoke about that, didn't we? We absolutely spoke about that. Um, it really, really was outrageous. Do you think Klopp get manager of the year? What, uh, how does Klopp get manager of the year for putting pressure on Guardiola and then, and then ultimately failing? It doesn't make any sense. Manager of the year should have probably gone to either Guardiola, Vieira, or maybe Frank. You could probably put Thomas Frank in that. But Vieira was someone who really, really impressed me in terms of the expectations. And as I said, the expectations going into the season for Klopp and Guardiola were to win the league. One of them won the league, one of them didn't. And the other one got manager of the year. Because Jurgen Klopp is the love child of the media. Because he smiles. <laughs> that's, my, that's, my, that's my Klopp impression, apparently. Um, they're going to regret that. Because he's that sort of bloke, the media loves him. Um, ah, look at that, Dean. Cheers, man. Appreciate that. Oh uh, seven to 09 was the last two kit season. There you go. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure it used to happen back in the day. Um, wow. 
That was an exhausting stream. Why are you making it so exhausting for in the comments, people? Jeez. I'm trying to be as interesting. Interesting? I'm trying to be <laughs> as interactive as possible. But if the comments don't get along and, and they don't just like fire in some decent stuff that I can react to, it's a bad one. It's a bad one. And Scott, I think you're probably right here. And it's exactly why Paul Pogba, for me, got so much scorn. When Paul Pogba set the levels that he sets, and I don't see those levels, that's why I give so much scorn towards Paul Pogba. When Harry Maguire puts in performances, gets into the Euro team of the season, team, team of the tournament, sorry, and then plays like he does there as captain, he's going to get more scorn. When Marcus Rashford scores 22, 23 goals in the 2019 season alongside Anthony Martial, and then they both turn to shit, they're both going to get my scorn. The, 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 the expectations that, that, that players um, give us determines, I suppose, how angry we get towards them. Estevo, what you're saying here, said, so Durbanville, uh, South Africa, Sam, you are, have, you've asked us who prefer between Nkunku and Nunes. Now I'm asking who is your preference? My preference is quite easy. It's Nkunku. I think in terms of what Manchester United need, I know that we need goals, right? First and foremost, we need goals. We need a goal scorer. So Nunes in that sense, yes. But in terms of the overall shape and style that we're building and the fact that I don't think we're going to sign a right winger, and Kunku ticks more boxes for me and will also bring a lot of goals. And I think we could build a better attacking unit overall with Nkunku in than we could with Nunes in. I don't think that United's team is good enough to have just a, an elite goal scorer on his own and that's his sole job in, a, in uh, Nunes. don't think our team is built well enough. Uh, and Malcolm is correct, actually. I literally just pissed myself. Um, Ice, you're saying, who do you hope United realistically sign this summer? Timber is somebody I definitely want to see come in. I'd be like seeing Kunku come in as well. <sighs> it's the midfield, though. Fucking hell. I've just, I've just said a centre-back and a bloody striker. Still can't talk about central midfield because I don't know. I just don't know. Frankie de Jong, I'm, I don't want to waste any more energy on that until we get some clarity on it. Who, the, who will the defensive midfielder be? I don't know. Who are the alternatives to de Jong? I don't know. But that's what we've got to sort that first. That's what I want to see next week, man. I want to see Manchester United next week really. So by the end of next week, we know who our central midfield targets are. I'm not just talking about uh, De Jong. Basuma, lots of you are mentioning him in the comments. Have you seen any Basuma rumours? It's all been quiet on the Western Front there. <sighs> Look, enjoy your weekend, people, right? Go outside. Have a nice gin and tonic. Probably not at 10.25 in the morning. If you do, who am I judging? I'm not judging. It's 12 o'clock somewhere in the world. But look, thank you very much for all joining in. Not everybody, but most of you. 99% of you, thank you very much for joining in. Um, make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe. I'm going to have a video out this afternoon, uh, lunchtime. I'm going to run through all the details of the latest financial reports and how and why the Glazers really are just continuing to suck the life out of the club. It's important I keep that narrative at the very, very top. I'm not just going to get distracted by transfers. Tomorrow, I'm going to have, I've got an interview done with Adam Kahn, a German football specialist, and we go in depth to speak about Christopher Nkunku, Conrad Lehmer, and Nordi Mukieli. That's going to be going out tomorrow as well. Don't say I don't treat you well sometimes. So make sure you drop a like on the video, subscribe to United People TV. Thank you very much for the show this morning. I'm, I need to go to bed after that. I'm knackered. I'm not going to actually go to bed. I'm going to carry on working. Woo! Exhausting. People, it's Friday. Chin up. Enjoy yourself.